Junk food alert. It's not just your health, it's your mind. Are you aware that the snacks you reach for might be influencing more than just your waistline? In this eye-opening video, we're delving into the surprising impact of ultra-processed foods on your mental health. Diets saturated with these highly processed options have been associated with elevated rates of morbidity and mortality, contributing to a heightened susceptibility to conditions such as metabolic syndrome, obesity, and depression. Despite their ability to satisfy our cravings for sweetness, fat, and salt, emerging research suggests that staples like soda, candy, energy bars, fruit-flavored yogurt, frozen pizza, and ready-to-eat meals might be particularly detrimental to the brain, impacting both mood and cognition. Studies reveal that diets high in ultra-processed foods correlate with a 44% greater risk of depression and a 48% higher risk of anxiety. As outlined in a meta-analysis featured in the journal Nutrients, the risk escalates even with the consumption of just 33% of calories from ultra-processed food, according to one study. A separate investigation in Brazil, involving 10,175 individuals, found that ingesting only 20% of calories from these foods was associated with a 28% faster rate of cognitive decline compared to those with a less processed diet. Perhaps even more concerning, a study tracking half a million people in England, Scotland and Wales revealed that for every 10% increase in ultra-processed food intake, the risk of dementia surged by 25%. Addressing this issue, lead researcher Melissa M. Lane highlighted in an email while the exact cause and effect relationship is still unknown, the strongest observational evidence from prospective studies leans towards the idea that eating high amounts of ultra-processed foods increases the risk of depression onset in the future. Melissa M. Lane is a postdoctoral research fellow at Deakin University's School of Medicine in Geelong, Australia. While it's common knowledge that excessive intake of salt, sugar and saturated fat is linked to chronic inflammation, high blood pressure, heart disease and type 2 diabetes, what many might overlook is their impact on the brain, raising the risk of vascular dementia due to decreased blood flow. Additionally, additives such as certain artificial sweeteners and monosodium glutamate can interfere with the production and release of brain chemicals like dopamine, norepinephrine and serotonin, adversely affecting mental and emotional well-being. Beyond these health concerns, there's another troubling aspect. Ultra-processed foods may be addictive. Ashley Gearhart, a professor of psychology at the University of Michigan, Ann Arbor, draws a striking comparison. Ultra-processed foods have more in common with a cigarette than foods by Mother Nature. This addictive quality isn't by chance. Cindy Leung, an assistant professor of public health nutrition at Harvard T.H. Chan School of Public Health in Boston, notes, Multi-billion dollar companies create these foods to hook us, so our agency around food is low. I see this as a food sovereignty issue. While humans have evolved to respond to foods that are sweet, fatty and calorie dense for survival, the unnatural combination of high sugar and fat, along with added salt, artificial flavorings and bright colors in ultra-processed foods, can lead our brains to lose control over these enticing, yet potentially harmful choices. The spectrum of food processing. Not all processed foods are created equal. There's a stark distinction between processed and ultra-processed items, and it's the latter that's associated with adverse health effects. So, what sets them apart? In broad terms, ultra-processed foods incorporate ingredients not typically found in a home kitchen. For a more precise understanding, we turn to the NOVA classification system. Unprocessed or minimally processed foods, such as fresh or frozen fruits, vegetables, seafood, meats, flour and pasta, typically boast ingredient lists with just one main item. Processed ingredients like vegetable oils, sugar and cornstarch are directly extracted from unprocessed foods. Processed foods including preservative-free bakery bread, certain cheeses and salt and water canned tuna, beans or vegetables feature concise ingredient lists with recognizable terms, with salt often serving as the primary preservative. On the flip side, 
Ultra-processed foods encompass items like soda, candy, cookies, cake, energy bars, fruit-flavored yogurt, meal replacement bars and shakes, hot dogs, various packaged breads, cereals, and frozen meals. These items tend to be high in fat, sugar, and or sodium, and are frequently augmented with flavorings, dyes, artificial sweeteners, and or other additives. The ingredient lists for ultra-processed foods can be extensive, exemplified by the Nutri-Grain Soft-Baked Strawberry Breakfast Bar, which boasts a list of 48 items. Understanding this distinction is crucial for making informed choices about the foods we consume. The influence of ultra-processed foods on brain function. A diet rich in ultra-processed foods not only poses threats to your overall health, but could also adversely impact your brain, mirroring the mechanisms through which such diets are associated with various chronic diseases. Often loaded with calories, exemplified by the 1603 calorie Burger King Texas Double Hopper, these diets can lead to obesity, a condition intricately linked to depression. One contributing factor lies in the dysfunctionality of fat cells, releasing inflammatory molecules that act as triggers for depression, anxiety, and even dementia. According to Melissa M. Lane, postdoctoral research fellow at Deakin University's School of Medicine, these ultra-processed foods are designed for easy and excessive consumption. Lane notes, ultra-processed foods are effortless to consume in large quantities because they are generally soft and easy to chew. Furthermore, they possess hyperpalatability, a scientific term denoting their intense tastiness. Lane explains that these attributes may disrupt the typical communication between the gut and the brain, suppressing the normal signals of satiety. This disruption becomes evident in studies like the National Institutes of Health Experiment, where individuals spontaneously consumed an extra 500 calories daily and gained an average of two pounds during a two-week ultra-processed food diet. In contrast, they lost two pounds on a whole food diet underscoring the impact of food choices on weight management. Notably, hyperpalatability contributes to food addiction, affecting about 14 to 20% of adults and 12 to 15% of children and adolescents. As indicated by research employing the Yale Food Addiction Scale, co-developed by Ashley Gearhart, a professor of psychology at the University of Michigan. Gearhart draws attention to the alarming similarity in addiction rates with substances like alcohol and cigarettes. Beyond weight concerns, the consumption of ultra-processed foods often leads to a neglect of nutrient-rich options like fruits, vegetables, and minimally processed whole grains. Melissa M. Lane emphasizes, that means you're short-changed on nutrients that are good for the brain, including phytonutrients, beneficial substances in plants. With approximately 8,000 varieties of polyphenols possessing antioxidant and anti-inflammatory properties, Early studies suggest that diets deficient in these compounds are associated with an increased risk of depression. In essence, opting for a diet rich in whole, minimally processed foods becomes pivotal for not only maintaining physical health, but also nurturing optimal brain function. Who's choosing to eat them? The dietary landscape in the United States is alarmingly dominated by ultra-processed foods, with adults deriving approximately 57% of their daily calories from these sources. The situation is even more concerning among children and teens, who astonishingly obtain a staggering 67% of their calories from ultra-processed foods, as indicated by the government's latest Health and Nutrition Examination Survey, a nationally representative study. This high intake is particularly significant considering that adverse effects on the brain have been associated with levels as low as 20%. What's noteworthy is that this trend spans across various demographics, transcending education and income levels. Even individuals with higher education and income surpass the 50% mark for calories from ultra-processed foods, as revealed by the survey. Cindy Leung from Harvard emphasizes, but people with low food security have an even higher intake shedding light on the disparities in dietary habits among different socioeconomic groups. A contributing factor to this disproportionate consumption is the targeted advertising of ultra-processed foods in lower-income communities. Food companies often focus their marketing efforts on these areas, promoting items like soda, 
which are not only heavily marketed, but are also the most economically viable and accessible options. Dollar stores and corner markets, frequented by many in lower income communities, become saturated with these less nutritious yet readily available choices, perpetuating the cycle of high, ultra-processed food intake in these populations. Breaking the habit. To reduce the intake of ultra-processed foods in your diet, consider the following advice from our experts. Begin by showing yourself compassion, recognizing that the environment is designed to encourage addictive eating behaviors, according to Ashley Gearhart. Establish a routine of three meals and one or two snacks each day. This helps prevent extreme hunger, reducing the likelihood of impulsively choosing quick, cheap, and ultra-processed foods that stimulate the brain's reward centers. Opt for less processed alternatives that you still enjoy, such as nuts and in-season, ripe fruit. For example, Ashley Gearhart suggests a lunch comprising eggs, a green salad with a delicious dressing, topped with Parmesan cheese and a handful of berries. When shopping, compare labels and choose foods with lower sodium and added sugar. Focus on items with shorter lists of recognizable ingredients, avoiding heavily processed options. Recognize that some ultra-processed foods can be healthier than others. For instance, supermarket whole wheat bread can provide fiber and additional nutrients, as pointed out by Cindy Leung. Educate children about marketing tactics employed by food companies to entice them into choosing certain ultra-processed products. Make them aware of the consequences of consuming these items, tapping into their sense of righteousness. Cindy Leung recommends discussing how companies manipulate through formulations, packaging with cartoon characters, and strategic placement at eye level and checkout aisles. Now that we've spilled the beans, or maybe tossed the salad, on the jaw-dropping truths about ultra-processed foods, it's time to sprinkle a little humor into our quest for healthier choices. Remember, changing your lifestyle is like trying to teach a tomato to juggle. It might seem tricky at first, but it's worth the effort. If this roller coaster ride through the nutrition world left you grinning like a banana in a fruit salad, go ahead and hit that like button, subscribe faster than a pizza delivery, and ring that notification bell like it owes you a punchline. Your support means the world to us, and together we can make informed choices for a healthier and happier life. Thanks for watching, and until next time, take care.